Imagine for a moment your pits smelling like nothing. You don't stink after you work out. Your teenager's foot odor doesn't exist. How is this possible? It's Lumi. Challenge Lumi to keep you funk free for 72 hours. Go to uglytruth.com slash Lumi. You can pick your favorite smell, the favorite type of applicator or stick or tube or wipe, and you will be amazed by your non-smelly body. Uglytruth.com slash Lumi. Welcome to The Ugly Truth. This is episode 541, 541 episodes, Stephanie. Yay. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> okay, so we are officially recording on 9-11. We are. I know. I know. It's a little odd. So uh, I don't know why. And it fell on a Saturday this year, which is kind of... Well, now you really get a chance to reflect. Exactly. You're yeah. not thinking about your work day nope. and, you know. You, you, I woke up this morning and I have been kind of like low-key not doing social media. Yeah. Outside of the bare minimum because I, first of all, I hate Facebook. Yeah. And apparently as you get older, you're supposed to love Facebook more. Um, I hate it. I don't think so. I, yeah. Well, it's. I'm really over it too, to be honest I with just, you. I just, I find nothing interesting. I just, you know what? It's not that I find anything interesting. The problem is, is that I have so many friends on it that mm-hmm. I feel like I, I have to look just to make sure you nobody to go died or there wasn't a major death in the family or right? something going on that I should right. be aware of. You're like, I need to be appropriate. Right. So I can't tell you how many times someone has posted, well, my sweet, dear, sweet mother has passed. We will miss her, blah, blah, blah. And when you're trying to do like the care yeah. mark and I'll always do the LOL. Oh God. I can't <laughs> tell you how many times. And you know what? I know I'm not alone because I've seen those and seen a couple LOL remarks. And then they're deleted. And then I'm like, oh, this was an accident because oh, there's yeah. no way they're it, mortifying. Have you ever seen like a, like a news <laughs> feed, like a news story about something tragic, um, like a car accident or whatever, mm-hmm. and there'll be all these sad emojis and or the the sad like, mm-hmm. and then like a couple people will do the laughing like, and then there's like 25 comments like, I don't know what's funny about this. <laughs> You're like, it's I'm like, wait, an error. I'm like, wait, wait, what is she talking about? You know, it's then I have to go up and look at the long list of people who liked or loved or whatever. I'm like, okay, so there's one ha ha face. So you literally went through the effort. They did. To mouse over to see who laughed at this post so that you could annihilate I'm them. Telling- Behind you. the screen. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, yeah. One, no one's allowed to make a mistake. No one's allowed to just be <laughs> given an apology and let it, let and moving on. You know, although we, there is 30 other comments where they, you can barely understand what they're saying because the grammar and the spelling is so <laughs> atrocious. <laughs> But it's people don't say anything about that. No, let's no. just ignore the fact that this person's completely illiterate. But can I just gather all of these and say, this is a testament of our education system. I am serious. Fix it. <laughs> Some of them I'm like, I don't even understand what you're trying to say. Like, I can't even piece it together. It's I'm like, like, I'm trying really hard. I have gone through and said, okay, hold on. Hold on. And I'll sit there and I'll read it. I'm like, U N E R. I'm I, I'm failing to comprehend <laughs> what you're trying to tell us. And I mean, and you know, we all have made typos or spelling errors uh-huh. in in a, in a long comment or mm-hmm. a longer comment where you look at it and you're like, damn it, I I put as instead of at. Oh, I hate or something that. like that. And right? you want to go back and fix it, but you can't. I do. Well, on Facebook you can. Mm-hmm. On Twitter, I don't think you can. You right? cannot. You have to delete. And I have deleted many a tweet <laughs> and so, redone it. But but um, some of them, I'm like, you actually posted this. Like you didn't look at it later and be like, what? Wait, what was I saying? And you didn't even attempt to fix it? I'm like, good no. lord. I'm like, those like six of the ten words you wrote were wrong. <laughs> I'm like, it's so true. It's so true. Anyway, so interestingly, it's been 20 years since 9-11. And yeah. I think we all remember that if you were old enough to remember, you remember exactly Sadly where you were. You remember yes. exactly what you were doing. I remember it like it just happened. And I have said the story many times. I woke up. I was listening. Well, for us, just because we're... We're in Northern California. Yeah, so yeah. it was it was very early for us. It was very early. The first plane hit at 6.23 a.m. And I woke up at 7. Yeah. And to my alarm, because back then we had clock radios. Wait, was radios. it 6.23? Yeah, it was. Clock radios. Yeah. And so my clock radio went that. off because it was a school day. And so yeah. it was like 7 o'clock. And I woke up to the DJ saying... The Capitol is closed. Everything is closed. Nothing is open. Stay home. Don't, you right. know, this is a state of emergency. I'm like, what the fuck? I know. And so I got up and, of course, Daryl, who is always has been and is still oblivious to news. What? Breaking news. No, he's Mr. never. Mr. Radio guy. Mm-hmm. Like, his whole life, his whole career. He is... jumps into work and is just He's a focused. communications major. Right? And so <laughs> I get up and I go, 
what's going on? And it, we barely had internet back then. Right. And so I said. We had TV, but yeah. Yeah, we did. And I go, what's going on? He goes, what are you talking about? I go, why is everything closed? Why is the state capitol closed? And he's like, I don't know. And so I turned on the Today Show. Yep. And I'm watching the Today Show going, oh my God, somebody ran in, somebody flew. And I go, well, this must have been like a horrible accident. Like, yeah, that's awful, what we all horrible thought. accident. And then right before my eyes, I watched the second plane plow into yeah. the building. And I went, what the fuck is going on? And I then know. I just went, this Terror. is not, this is not Something an Something really bad is happening. Something bad is happening. And so I lost it. Yeah. I really thought that we were being invaded. I and did I did too. not know. I thought they were using planes against us. And there are well, they thousands. Well, were. And there's thousands of planes in the sky. Yeah, right. That's true. We didn't know the magnitude at that point. I think right. it, 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 it unfolded rather, it was quick, but it was slow very at the quick. same time because it was happening in real time. Yeah. So the, the planes that hit the Twin Towers mm-hmm. was everybody's first like, yes. that's what, how we found out. But yes. the first one we thought was, like you said, everybody thought it was an accident. Something like, bad. What an oh my insane, God. Terrible yeah. Thing. And, and yes. people were like, oh, was it a small plane? I'm like, yeah, but that explosion was so huge, mm-hmm. you know? And then when the second one hit, we knew. And then all of a sudden, I just had this wave of fear come it's over weird, me. Your body loses temperature. You're like, I just felt like you panicked. Faint. I, thought like, I, I almost fainted. And I'm like, you know what? Where do you go? You know, if you're, if there's an attack like that, there's nowhere to run. You have to stay. You just have, I I kept the kids home and I'm like, you can't go. And they're just like, why? What do you mean? Because Tyler was just nine. Little. He was a baby. Yeah. You know, or eight. Yep. And so I said, no one's leaving. And it was so bad that Daryl called our mother and dropped off a Xanax. (laughs) She's like. Oh God, I bet. she normally doesn't. She usually sends Paul to do stuff. And she came over. She goes, Jamie, you need to take a Xanax. And I was like, okay. And yeah. so I took it. And I'm like, oh, it barely worked. Well, I went to work. I worked for Citibank at the time. Citibank had occupied an entire floor of the 110. Oh, my God. Floor. Yeah. It was one of our corporate headquarters. Mm-hmm. But I didn't even think about that at the time. I, no, I showed yeah. up to work and everybody was in a conference room with the TV. We, and I went in there. A lot of people were crying. Um, yeah. And then I, it was, I was still kind of coming to terms with what was happening. It's shocking. Because when I had to leave for work, I think it was right after the second tower, or the second one hit the tower. Yeah. So we really didn't know the full. You didn't know anything. We just knew something really scary was happening. Right. And so when I got to work, the half an hour it took me to get there, more stuff had developed. Sure. The other, I think one of the other planes had crashed or we knew there was a plane in the air that was hijacked. And then all of a sudden it was like this massive, oh my God. And then people were on the phone trying to call our corporate headquarters to see if everybody was okay. Because we didn't even understand the extent of the damage. No. It, the towers hadn't fell. So, yeah. I mean, we thought maybe there's some people who were alive. You oh, know, yeah, We don't know where the cutoff was. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. people were calling and no one could get through. And it was just, it was becoming horrible. More horrible yeah. by the second. Eventually they were like, go home, everybody. Let's just go home. We this can't is stupid. This. We can't work. No one's coming. There's... No one can do, do anything but sit there and watch the TV. Not to mention that financially everything was shut down. It did, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, and as the day progressed, we sadly had to realize that all of our people at Citibank were dead. And yeah. because obviously when the building fell. It hit the 60th floor. It did. Any, anybody below, anybody above, it was almost impossible. Yeah, those phone calls that they have released of the people who were calling nine one one who were above yeah. the the where the planes hit are so difficult to listen they to. They are difficult. Because they had so long to wait and Hours. think that they were going to be rescued. So with that being said, I mean, obviously this is dropping the next day, but if you have an opportunity or if you haven't, yeah. you know, there are some really good, profound documentaries and podcasts out there. I definitely encourage it. That's our t- that's our testament to 9/11. Yeah. Continue educating your children. Always remember, never forget. Definitely never forget. And the one thing that's great about the United States is that now we've recovered to some degree and I got to go to Bottle Rock in Napa. Yeah. A week ago. <laughs> Because that's what you Speaking that's, of spoils. That's what American do, that's what we do is we go let's in, let's embrace our freedoms and we do things like this. And it's fun. And it's fun and it really makes you And coming off the heels of the pandemic, it had to be, be pretty Yeah, exciting. now we are obviously knee deep in a Delta variant, but California's doing all right. No 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 well, we are, but I mean California's I doing good. Yeah. I mean we're, we're actually vaccinated and we're very mask appropriate. Here's what's great. Bottle Rock is like the Northern California Coachella, but better. Yeah. Because it's not full of a bunch of douchey LA people. And drugs. <laughs> Sorry, and LA. LA shit, yeah. But it's I 
we I was a little nervous because this is going to be the first huge event that I was going to since yeah. the pandemic hit. And I'm like, how is it going to be? Because I saw Lollapalooza like everybody else. And it looked it was very violent. And, you know, because people like we were talking before the show have for, some have forgotten how to behave in society. Oh, I didn't know. And, you know, they're like little ferals. And so I was like, <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen. So we go in. And you have to show your, you had to show your vaccination card or a COVID negative. Right. We went in. There was not that many people there. Now, when we were, Stevie Nicks I think was, they limited the capacity, didn't no, they, they? No. They really didn't? Nope. Stevie Nicks was supposed to be the headliner on the day we went. And uh, she canceled. And she said, it's too dangerous for me. I'm old as fuck. I don't want to get COVID. Sorry, I'm backing yeah. out. Fine. Chris Stapleton, who is a country singer that Daryl and I absolutely love, she, he took over. So we had been there for a couple of hours, and then we were sitting next to somebody at a picnic table. We were having some yummy dumplings, and we were sitting next oh my to God, dumplings. These cup, this couple. And what's so great is everybody was social distancing. They were Good. as best that you could, as right? best as you could. So we were at these picnic tables, and we were on one end, and then a couple was on the other end. So we had like a nice four or five feet apart. And they turned to us and they said, yeah, did you guys hear some? He, she goes, yeah, some lady in the bathroom area said that Chris Stapleton canceled. And I'm like, excuse me, what? And I'm like, this can't be true. I go, this is why we're here. We literally gave up oh our tickets God. on Sunday to see the Foo Fighters right. so that we could see Chris Stapleton. And so sure as shit, 30 minutes before he had canceled due to a non-COVID illness. And so now it was going to be the high women, which is Marin Morris Brandy Carlisle and some other people that I can't think of their names. Now, I don't hate the high women. I like them, but I wasn't really interested. Yeah, you came for a certain act. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. I dressed for a country concert. Oh, great. So I was wearing, I was all Johnny Cash. Your, ca- your cowboy boots? I had my cowboy boots, my black jeans, and my black t-shirt. I was ready for a country concert. Yeah. It was hot as fuck. Yeah, it was. And I'm like, all I had to do was get to sunset, and then I'll I'll look just exactly the way I want to look. And, this, and it cools off, so it's tolerable. Yeah, it's the Bay Area, so it's fine. So here I am in the in the blazing sun, surrounded by a bunch of boho Instagram influencers, looking like a ridiculous fool. <laughs> and I'm like, I should have worn. About. I should have worn my boho dress that there I brought. Was, I can't believe there wasn't other country like folk. There were a ton. Okay, but and they were like furious they were so disappointed and there was a lot of cute cowboys there i have to say there was a lot of cuties (laughs) it's really easy to hide your fugly or ugly or even if you're marginal yes i know you can get away with a lot but uh, there was a lot of cute tall cowboys standing around some hot ones too yeah on their phone looking like shocked like what do i do i'm here in napa and i don't know what the fuck i'm doing here you know i want to leave you know Uh and so um we were really really disappointed and i turned him and i said i'm not gonna lie i want to fucking leave he goes me too and i said do you want to just go home and get drunk and he's like i do so we saw maren morris she was amazing and she's gorgeous and she's so cute for that yeah we saw a lot of things we saw this band uh this act called she's uh big frida uh she is uh not a drag queen but very much flamboyant. Okay. Badass. I oh. mean, that that area, because there's several stages on the right, bottom. Right, right, right. That stage was ass to cock from stage <laughs> to the end. It was the place to be. It was the place to be. So we were in the back, and I'm, and they're, she's like, get your ass up, get your ass up. And we're like, get your ass up, get your ass up. <laughs> we were like having so much fun. Sweet. So we saw a lot of really great bands, and so yeah. that was great. But it was about seven o'clock, and I said, "You know what? Honestly, I don't really want to see the high women. I mean, I yeah. they're good, I know. So but what I, would they be on at eight? Or the they 8:30? came on around eight, and I said, let's just like because I know they shut it down, and I heard at ten on the nose. It is a county ordinance that they do right. not fuck around with. So we took like they off. They cut sound to they do. bands. She, Guns and Roses was on Saturday, and people were outraged. And I'm like, and they well. kept singing on a dead mic. I'm like, okay, the Foo well. Fighters did it too. Who? The Foo Fighters. Oh, did they? Yeah. So well, why didn't they just time it better? Because that's just not how they... That's not, that's not rock and roll, Stephanie. I Come know, on. But I mean, better. if you know you're going to get cut off and they your don't, sound is literally going to get cut almost off. Like a, it's almost like a badge of honor to get cut off. Like that's what you want. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what... Especially this is, at the age of these people. I mean, how old are the Foo Fighters? They're, they're dads. They're 50s. <laughs> they're older than that. I was like... They're, they're in their Seriously, 50s. yeah. The, yeah. The, the other day, Jerry was like, "Oh yeah, did you hear the guy, the the drummer from Rolling Stones died?" I'm like, "Jerry, he was ancient." <laughs> Charlie, he's like, I, "I'm just so sad," and I'm like, "He was like 83." He I'm was, like, "He was an elderly gentleman. He yes. wasn't like a spring chicken." Like, "Oh, that's tragic." <laughs> it was not tragic. His life was over. <laughs> 
I'm like, Mick Jagger is like walking death. I'm like, I don't even, I mean. Nobody his, knows how that one guy's still alive, the, the guitar player. <laughs> I think he's dead, actually. Anyway, so, um. So we left, but we actually had a really good time. Uh, we were glad we stayed. Yeah, and the silent for disco sure. basically is you wear headphones, and they have three, two to three DJs, and you can change the channel. Oh, okay. And listen, That's and they're cool. they're really great DJs, and all you see is a bunch of people bouncing around with headphones on. Right. <laughs> and Daryl and I have done the silent disco every year. We love it. So we, I said, let's just do the silent disco. It always cheers us up. It's yeah. Great. So we it's went fun. in there, put in the silent, you know, put on our headphones, and we're bopping around. And the best part is watching people dance. Yeah, of course. Oh, my God. It's so fun. It's amazing how many people don't have rhythm. <laughs> but you don't care. You don't care. You just watch and you're like, well, they're having fun. Who, who am I to it's judge? It's kind of like when you have your ear, ear, earphones in at home and you're singing. Yeah. And you think you sound amazing. Ooh. But if somebody's yeah. outside, <laughs> I think it's similar with dancing. One sweet day. Yeah, yeah, you think you look great, but you really you're just like, oh god. So it was fun, and so we were like, all right. So we finished, and we were walking away, and we were walking. Somebody's like, oh man, Silent Disco's hopping, and they're like, let's go. <laughs> you know, so it's a really, it was a really fun time. Fun. Um, then we went home, and you know, I was so happy to be home, and I'm like, I'm a shower. And so we found Ugh. out the next day that 98 percent of the people who were there were vaccinated. Oh. Only 2% had to show a COVID negative. Wow. And it was the same for every day. That's of the, great. It was awesome. Yeah. I'm like, this is wonderful. So, of course, I was still a little concerned about getting COVID. You I mean, still get just it because I'm. It. Right. And so I've been hunkering. I stripped off of all of my clothes. I'm like, it's like being at an airport. Yeah. You just take everything off oh and wash God. it. Yeah. And Joe's like, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. It's like I when just... you go to the state fair and you just like have to wash everything. You're like, oh my God, I've touched so many nasty things today. Do you remember when mother would take us thrifting and we, she would have baby wipes in the car? Oh yeah. And she's like, you, and then you wipe off your hands and they're filthy. Oh my God. Absolutely necessary. Oh yeah. my God. And Ugh. so I took Mackenzie, I took Malia thrifting a couple weeks ago or like a month or so ago. And I said, okay, I don't do the baby wipe in the car thing. I go, but the second we get home, you wash yeah. your hands immediately. Well, I mean, it's amazing how self-aware I am now of like when I go to the grocery store. Yeah, of how not much you touching touch? anything. Well, yeah. after I'm when I'm leaving and I'm going home, I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't even unload the car. I'm like, Jerry, <laughs> he I comes must... out. I'm like, he's and he. I go straight for the sink. We, he does the same thing. Yeah, we all do it now. It's just like normal. Well, we keep um, the disinfectant spray in our cars, so yeah. we'll do that right away. And then, yeah, um, we've just been so. Yeah train to try to kill everything right. but anyway so the day before though we went in the day before because uh there's always hotels available the day before the th- concert but you'll oh. never find a hotel for the weekend that's true so that's a good point. so our new trick is to check in go on, on thursday, thursday and then we go on friday and then we go home right and so that's it's smart and we have our car parked and then Plus, we can I just bet you the rates are like tolerable they're way like three times cheaper yeah i was about to say because imagine what the rates would be on a friday or well Saturday. We, i remember one time we were like hey we want to you know we'd like to stay for two nights can you, can you get us a room she goes i can but it's gonna be twenty five hundred dollars a night huh. i'm like what a joke night he, she's like well we have i mean we it's beyond booked like you can't you know what always gets me about stuff like that is like whenever it's, we, ju- it's just demand i know but yeah. I, i'm like who has that much money yeah i mean there's really that many people who have five no. g's for the weekend i'm like it's i insane. just got it. i mean yeah because every time we go we're like well we have the twin we have a twin room available oh, or i'm God. like don't you have a suite or something no all the suites are booked i'm like the suites are too grand i'm like <laughs> they're sold out yeah God. done and done some people book a year in advance to Seriously. stay there Seriously. So anyway, um, so we pull in on a Thursday and we're like, let's like have some fun. Yeah. Because, you know, so we pulled in on Thursday. Sure the vibe was great still. It was great. Before. Everybody's like, you know, you can feel the energy. You People know. who came from out of town are there already. Oh, already. Yeah. We saw a lot of artists pulling in and checking Sweet. in. You know, nobody that anybody would recognize. So it's but, still fun. It's but exciting. it's You can tell that there are people yeah. ready for the weekend. So we um, booked this tasting um, a little past downtown in the old part of downtown. It's called, I think it's called the Vintner's. And so um, we went in, and this place specifically, they are the tasting house for super small production wines. Oh. Wineries that just cannot afford to have a tasting room. Right. They don't even produce their wine on property. They actually have to, like, rent. Send it. They rent, and they make their wine at, like, Alpha Omega or right. Brasswood or these places where they can actually host these small wine productions. Yeah. And it's a real, it's an honor to to allow these people because some of these wines are unbelievably beautiful. Oh yeah. And they're almost always generational winemakers. Like they've been in there since birth. Like they've lived in that yeah. since birth. They're like, "Oh yeah, like the one 
gentleman, Randy, he has been he has been in Yountville his whole life. Mm-hmm. And he worked for um, Robert Mondavi for 39 years. Wow, yeah, so he knows some stuff. He knows some shit. And so he's like, but I was sick of it. It was corporate. So I just do my own. So he buys grapes from people who have extra from some very reputable wines. Oh, he doesn't I'm even sure. name names. He's just like, well, they're reputable. And then he makes these gorgeous, beautiful wines. But you can't buy them anywhere because no. he only makes like two cases. Right. Or whatever. Oh, wow. That so is so awesome. We met him. We got to taste his wines. Petit Verdot, he's one of the only ones that makes it. And so we bought it, of course. Oh, yes. Well, we just had a blast. And our host lives in Sacramento. Oh, that's <laughs> and strange. so we hit it off with him. Small I will world. say there's only one thing. <laughs> so, and of course, I had my awkward moment there. Of course, oh, I did. Of course, you did. Of course, I did. Anyway, this gentleman, Jeremy, um, he's he was wonderful. Walk in immediately. I'm like, God, you're really fucking cheesy. But he ended up not being cheesy. He ended up being really, really knowledgeable. Well, very I mean, outgoing. I don't know about you, but I'm always I'm so judgy. The second I meet someone, I mean, someone. I'm judgy and I'm annoyed. Like I'm annoyed before you give me a reason. <laughs> I walked in. We walked in, and I'm he, like Ugh. he comes over and he goes, "Well, hello," and I was just like, "No, yeah, that's me." No. I'm immediately like. Oh, God. <laughs> and I, in my mind, I'm like, he's our host. I can feel it. I just know it. <laughs> and again, Daryl's like, well, hello. You know, and I'm like, oh, like, my oh God. Oh, God. I hate my life already. So we go up. We had a beautiful table. We had a little charcuterie. And so he yeah. he was so nice, though, because he's like, he, he poured us a little rosé to kind of cleanse our palate and get ready for the tasting. And what's great about places like this is there's no rules. So, you know, he they probably have a standard rule. And then you tell him what you like. And he's like, okay, now we're going to play. Yeah. And then they give us all this great stuff. I'm sure they're hoping that you will interact with them. And we did. Because there's people who come in and are like, we don't know what we like. This is our first time. Or like, they really don't drink wine. Yeah, they're like, well, tell us something. He's like, tell me what you guys like. And so we were talking about it. Anyway, it was a beautiful tasting. Um, But here's what was great is... I said, Daryl always finds a way to brag. And he's like, oh, well, my wife does a podcast. <laughs> and he goes, oh, really? And so he goes, well, what's the name of it? And he goes, well, it's the Ugly Truth Podcast. He goes, I've heard of that podcast. Oh so I'm God. like, get the fuck out of here. We're and famous. I'm like, and I said, in my mind, I'm like, no, you haven't. <laughs> like, he's just being polite. I'm assuming and this guy gets a tip. Uh, probably. Yeah, probably. By you, right? Well, yeah. But I mean, I don't think that's why he said it. But, I'm kidding. Um, he, he probably meant it. And I said, you wouldn't listen to it, though. And he goes, I wouldn't. I go, well, no, it's very girly. And then you said, it's like Cosmo Magazine. I go, well, she's not wrong. That's actually kind of true. true. It is a little Cosmo mag. Well, I mean, it's a good break, though. I mean, who doesn't yeah. love sitting down with a brand new Cosmo and like reading all the articles the about how to keep your vagina clean, you know, <laughs> yeah. after a week of raunchy sex. <laughs> it's about the 90s all over again. So, um, but what was... Uh, a little annoying was that uh, Daryl and this person, Jeremy, they seem to be kind of um, oh testosterone battling Ugh. and one upping in a sense. And I'm like, I can sense it. And they pro- maybe they don't know what they're doing, but I sense it. And I'm like, I hate both of it's you like right two now. It's like roosters. It's like, can you all just stop cutting each other off? Try stop stop saying, you know, ah. it's like. And so finally, he, well, he wasn't a very good host then because you're he su- was. You're supposed to let the guy like take over. Fine, if you want to be the man, he I'm did. Fine, do well, it. that was the thing is he did. And so when he left, I turned to Daryl and I said, "You know, it'd be really great if you just stopped cutting him off every ten minutes. I'd love to hear about the wines. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be great." And Daryl's, you know, he looks down and gets all, you know, testosterone-y. And I'm like, oh, God. I just, so then he's annoyed. He wasn't annoyed really. He's like, I'm not doing anything. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> of course you aren't. And then. <laughs> We had this charcuterie plate, and I asked him, I said, Jeremy, are any of these goat cheese? Because I hate goat cheese so much. Yeah, we know. And he goes, Well, no. I know. Yeah. He goes, No, 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 these are not. And so he said all the names of it, and Daryl goes, No, those are fine. So I take the soft cheese and I put it on this amazing bread that they gave us, and I took a bite and I go, This is goat cheese. And he goes, No, it isn't. And I go, It is goat cheese, Jeremy. I know it. If it's not goat cheese, it's lamb cheese. He goes, no, I'm just He goes, Well, well it's, it's, um, he said it was a uh, Humboldt fog, and I go, "That is goat it cheese." It is goat cheese. I was about to say, even I know. And he goes, "Let me check." So he goes downstairs. He goes, "I apologize. It is goat cheese." And I'm like, "I know my goat cheese because I like, hate it. I hate it." If so you much. hate something, you you know what it tastes like. I go, "It's like licking a goat's neck." <laughs> But what I loved but about I like it. the whole interaction was that we were so comfortable. Yeah. He was cool. And he is a sommelier, like a legit sommelier level two. And I I acknowledge that as something. He, it's only been a year. So I'm like, congratulations. That is huge. It is huge. I think it's amazing. 
amazing. And especially to have a job in a prestigious place in Napa. And he is so passionate about it. And I love that about him. And so we, I really enjoyed his his hosting. I thought it was great. We, we joined the club because I'm Yay. like, this is the kind of wine I want. I don't need to, I can buy all the wines that we have currently. I can buy anywhere. Yeah, sure so, can. I mean, for the most part. So this, it, this was so great. Well, I had way too much wine. Oh, and so no I had my awkward moment. <laughs> we went back to the hotel. I passed out, Lovely. and then Daryl woke up and he's like, "Hey, we have to go to our second uh, event in like an at like forty minutes. Are you up for it?" And I'm like, "Yes, I am. Make me coffee." So we chugged yeah. some coffee. We headed to Yountville, it's smart. and we went to this place that is a champagne caviar bar. Oh, to die, Stephanie. I don't live this life. Uh, yeah, you do, actually. Well, we did that day. My mouth was watering. Stop it. Why do we, Every time we do the show, I'm hungry. I, I had fruit today, and that was it. <laughs> now I'm talking about caviar. I'm like, eh. I used to not think I liked caviar. Well, the, I was actually surprised when you told me. Where, actually, I saw you post something. Yeah. And I was like, Jamie, caviar? Yeah. So I was a little So surprised. I was like, what is this? So uh, we, we go in. It is a Thomas Keller pop-up. Right. Amazing. So it's... Like a two blocks away from the French Laundry in Sweet. Yountville, so we they just basically take over this this vacant location, mm-hmm. and apparently he's a co owner of this caviar uh, company. Oh, and that's why he did this thing with this woman. Uh, I can't remember. I'm sorry, I have no names for any of this. So we sat down, and one of the reasons we really wanted to go is I have never had Dom Perignon. Have oh, you? really? Yes, I have. I haven't. I've had it a couple times actually. You can get it by the glass here, which oh. is shocking. Well, I mean, how is it worth it though? What do you mean? I mean, because I would think that buying it by the bottle, I mean, how much is it a glass? It was $65 a glass. So that's what I'm saying. Isn't a bottle like 100 and something? No. Yeah. Well, no. you can buy it at like BevMo for it was, like 150 It was not. Okay. And so... Was it a special, like a reserve or something? Yes. Oh, okay. It wasn't just a plain bottle of... No. Not that any of them are plain, but they you know They had I mean. two to choose from. One was $65 a glass and one was $95 a glass. Oh, I would have just gone for the 90 I didn't. I did the 65 because I don't like spending money. I and Daryl wants to indulge and I'm like, that's fine, but I'm doing it as little as possible. Did he get one too? Yes. And so, and then we ordered some caviar dishes. Everything was amazing. And what I love about... This specific, this isn't going to sound snooty, and I don't care. Thomas Keller, <laughs> when you go to the French Laundry, well, the whole thing sounds snooty, by the way. I know. And so, so when you go stop to these it places, with your snooty. But here's what's great: he's not snooty. So like, no, was, he's cool. There was like a live jazz band, and they were playing like Disney tunes and Grease. Yeah, I love that. It was so cool, and everybody's sitting around, yay, clapping. Well, I mean, and it's it was a, so chill. It's you know, a treat for everyone there. Of even, course, even rich people don't like. You know, that's maybe a little indulgent for them. I not hope everybody. So. I mean, I'm sure a billionaire and like I would not, not just go. Bucks. Hey, let's go down to the champagne bar for yeah. the for a snack. No, <laughs> no. Right. So what I love, but what I love about that whole attitude is that you don't feel like you don't belong, right. and that's kind of the God, point. God, I know that's I hate- the point, and that does suck when you go to somewhere. I have been to I restaurants. Have, so I have too. I've been to places where I go. Well, clearly they don't want my green money. Yeah. they want someone else's green money. And if you, and by the way, establishments who can achieve that, mm-hmm. where it's extremely expensive, but yet they're able to make yeah. you feel like you belong, it's it's really difficult to do, and it's amazing. And not to mention, you will spend more, and you do spend more. Yeah. And the thing is, is like you know, I hate when people assume that based on the way you look or the car you're driving right. or whatever that you that don't, you don't have, have money it. i'm yes. like we have gone places where we had lots of money and but we still look like we look every day yeah. and it's like well that sucks for you because i actually really wanted to come here and spend a bunch of money and it's just, now i'm it's, not it's the same thing and i've said this a million times it's like that scene in pretty woman where she's like i have all this money and i yeah. can't spend it so true it's, it's literally that and that is such a terrible it's way to do dumb. business it it's is so dumb. dumb i think a lot of people have figured it out and one thing i will say about california is that we've we been are, to wineries like that we are probably yeah, yeah. you have i'm sure mm-hmm. you have because you've been to a lot but for california in general we are pretty blessed to have that chill kind of vibe. Very chill vibe. Because I know I've heard when you go to Manhattan it's not necessarily that way. Yeah, I would agree or with France, that. Or France. Like people in Paris and stuff. I've heard that France is very snooty. Yeah. And I look forward to the It's one of the, the reasons why they don't like Americans because they think, well god, they're so, you know, like we're like, we're like cowboys or they're whatever. They're so crass. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to Non-formal. go to France. Non-formal. I would love to go to France and be have someone offend me. It'd be fun. Be like, <laughs> they're offended. But I do anyway, want to go to France. Yeah. I do too. Anyway, I so. I want to go to Monaco. We had an amazing uh, visit uh, I got to try the Dom Perignon and our server. Ken. Was it, what did you think? 
it does taste, it tastes like nothing I've ever had before. Did you enjoy it though? Because you're a I did. Champagne person. I did enjoy it. It's very dry and it's not as fruity as most of the champagnes I've had. And right. I've had French champagne, but this one's very aged, very yeah. differently. And it might be because it was a special reserve. I don't know. I, well, when you I know. had it, I didn't like it. It was a little funky. Yeah, had a I was funky... not a fan. I mean, the first time I had it was with my ex-husband, uh-huh, me and Joel. Uh-huh. We ordered it somewhere when I first got, as an 18-year-old, I was awarded $80,000 <laughs> in a settlement. Remember, and so we indulged and bought a bottle of it, and I hated it. Yeah. So I, I told Daryl, like I'm like, it. it's it's a lot drier than I expected. It <laughs> tastes old. It yeah. tasted old. I, I liked it, but it was it's definitely something that rem- reminds you that champagne is special. Yeah. So I drank it, and I, you know, obviously I... Whatever. And then, and I actually had more than one glass. I'd forgotten. I had ordered some rosé. Oh, I no, thought you no, meant no, two no, of those. No, no, no. I was like, no, my no. goodness. They you had, just bought the damn bottle. No, we would have. No, I ordered some rosé that I had never heard of before, and it yeah. was very lovely as well. Mm. But anyway, not $65 a glass. Yeah. So anyway, we were wrapping up, and my server came up from behind me. He whispers in my ear. He was adorable. Oh, my God. I would have gotten chills. Adorable little gay boy. He was so oh, cute. Oh, I'd be like, can you touch your lips right on the nape, please? No, no, no. But they have, and they have masks on. Oh, and that's so true. so he leans in and he goes, I, I, I understand that this was your first time trying Dom Perignon. He goes, so I want you to try the other one. So he gave oh me a God. sample. Of oh, a the, sample. Uh, as a well, it was a, a no, no, no. But it was a nice sample of the, of the more a, expensive. You got a good mouthful. Oh, easily. And so he goes, so I wanted you to try this. And I'm like, um, That is so sweet. Thank you. And so. Just I, you or did Dale get some too? Just me. <laughs> and so I tasted. I'm like, oh. Ah. I'm like, well, now I know why it's $100 a glass. Yeah. This is delicious. So good. And right? so I oh, obviously let Daryl taste some. And so yeah. we were there for almost two hours. We had such a good time. Lovely. The, oh, the service is unparalleled. Unparalleled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so friendly. It and they're, they're, they're clearly money. so happy to be. Even the hostess, she's like, isn't it really good? I mean, like, it was so <laughs> great. And they're, everybody there is beautiful and happy. Oh, my God. Love. And it was just amazing. And so we left. And I said, That's I really so like exciting. that. I go, that is a very special place that yeah. you go once in a lifetime or twice. Or maybe you know. something really special you're celebrating something really great yeah but i mean you would not put that on the schedule for every t- visit oh, but God, it's no. well, I mean, definitely something that i wish but <laughs> if you have the privilege of being that close yes. and you have the cheddar <laughs> i mean do it do it and the caviar is unlike anything i've ever oh my tasted. god yeah and so he said well, which fun. caviar because we did this tasting right and he goes well which one did you like i go realistically i like this one it was one of the cheaper ones i go i like this one and he's like it's funny that you like that one. It's the only one that comes from the lake where they raise the fish in a lake and they actually have to fight the currents. Oh. And that's why you like that one because it's not briny. It's not right, fishy. Right, right, right. The other two that that's are interesting. super duper expensive were from China and they're farm raised and everything's perfectly organic and I'm whatever. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. He's like, and they're a little briny and fishy. And I'm like, not as big of a fan. Is Some the... people like that taste. He goes, so you like the Serbian. Yeah. And I'm like... Thank you for educating me. I had no idea. Not that I'll ever go around saying, although, didn't you say you bought a jar of caviar? I, a tin, yes. Or whatever. Yes, I did. And, and it, you can buy it, by the way. It's Asteria. It's Astera. I think that's how you say it. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Acetra? No, Acetra. I don't mm-hmm. I remember how you said it. It's the same kind that you had because I saw yeah. on your social media, but you can get it from a variety of places. And we do have a really good one mm-hmm. that happens to be farmed right here in the valley which is crazy yeah when I, I in fact i was looking online for something expensive i wasn't even looking for something local mm-hmm. and i one of the ones that kept coming up over and over again um for the some of the restaurants the fine restaurants in san francisco napa we're all getting it from this place and i'm like so then i looked and i'm like elkhorn boulevard <laughs> You wouldn't even live on that street. Hell no. It's literally out there by like far out by like Rio Linda. Right. And I was shocked. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. So. You don't You don't necessarily think of Elkhorn, Elkhorn Boulevard and caviar. I Never in a, in million, a million years. I know. That's I so thought funny. I would be having it shipped from somewhere like LA yeah. or wherever. But no, no. And it was great. And it came... It was $300 for a tin. Um, I think it was like three ounces, so it's not much. But Well, how much could... Well, I mean, I you mean, said you could inhale. Me. Well, here's the thing. you with When you buy caviar and it's that expensive, you can't let it sit. You know, you... No. I mean, and once you open it, it's you, you really to need it. to eat it, yeah. like, that day or... Yeah, and the... There's so the many. Day. There's so many accoutrements. 
that you can have with it that I had no idea. Well, I had all the stuff. Yeah. I prepared. Of course you did. Oh <laughs> well, I God. knew. I'm like, okay, this is a lot for me. You know, I don't normally you know spend what? $300. Here's the thing. Regardless of our childhood, <laughs> if you believe in past lives... Oh my God, I'm rich. We were born with I, silver spoons I've in our mouth. I've said that Jerry and I are we, both like that. We were dressed in silks and <laughs> we had servants and we had... We had debutante parties we when had, we were 16. Absolutely. We were of the royal court somewhere. <laughs> like, that's who we were. I wore Louis Vuitton sandals. To I mean, if I did a deep dive on our on our family and we found out that we were, you know, related well, to royalty, it would not surprise here's me. Here's the thing. Uh, here's the thing in that I find years, so interesting. I'd be like, we were not serfs in a previous no. life. We have made a lot. We have had a lot of discussions on the show about our mother. Yeah. And the love-hate relationship that we... Hate is a strong word. The, yeah. lo- the love struggle that yeah. we have had. Most, a lot of women have struggles with their mother. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. I guess I still have guilt about it, you know, to sure. admit that it's, it's, it's difficult for me. But, yeah. but one thing I will say that I am forever grateful for is that my our mother raised us to be poor rich girls quality, i don't know how she did it quality over quantity i absolutely yeah it's I, true. we i know we were very very poor for portions of our childhood sure. but for some strange reason did, we all are like silver spoons in our mouth she's like you don't have to act poor just because you are poor and i'm so grateful for that yeah. yeah i mean it's not even yeah i mean it's like you know it, it doesn't even feel uh what's the word i cannot speak today it's one of those days oh my god i'm premenstrual oh. i stutter and stuff when i'm Me premenstrual too. don't you yeah mm. It's not, it's, it's, it's organic. Yeah. Like it feels normal. Yeah. And it shouldn't. <laughs> I'm like, we never have anything. Like literally. I know. So I, I know. And I, I know. hate it. I'm like, God, why was I born into this life? I, I deserve better than I this. do. I, I don't want to work. I should be rich. I, God. I'm so good at it. The only problem that we didn't get to go along with that attitude was we were not trained to find a rich man. <laughs> right, wrong. I know. But that's the problem. She's like, I'm you like, will be oh independent God. women. Get information. Well, mom. But it's like, oh, damn it. <laughs> mom is for, for as much of a prude as she comes off to be. And I don't mean that in a derogatory manner. She's just very conservative. She's conservative, but she's also like, you don't need no fucking man. She is. And that, unfortunately, along with wanting to be wealthy, means you've got to make your own. And it's like, well. And it's difficult to do. It's hard. So before we go to our ugly and awkward moms, you have one? I certainly did until okay. we got off on the topic. I'll tell you. Well, if you don't, I'll tell you mine. Uh, before we get into that, some quick celeb news. I adore Kaylee Cuoco. Oh, you do? The blonde girl from The Big Bang Theory. She's getting she was, Yes. Again. But she was on Seven Rules to Date My Daughter with John Ritter. Okay. She was in... So she's been working forever. She's yeah, been a yeah. sitcom worker forever. And she's That's great. True. I think she's great. No, she is great. And so anyway, so she married... I never saw the hype with her looks-wise, though. She's athletic. She's an athletic yeah. girl. But she used to model. But she was also a, a junior a junior Olympian. Like, the girl oh, really? is no joke. She's accomplished. She's incredibly wealthy now. Oh. Incredibly wealthy. Well, the Big Bang Theory was... I mean, she made... In one year, she made like $25 million Wow. Minimal. Does she do movies or just She's shows? done a couple of movies. And so... And she also has my the flight attendant, which has been nominated for many awards. It was on her own production company that put it oh, out, great. and she's doing a second season. And yeah. why does she have such trouble with men? Well, I don't know. And the thing is, is, is that I she's so she's an, an ambitious female and su- successful and. I, the the first guy did she pick wrong dudes. She had bad taste in the first one. The first guy was kind of a gold digger, oh. and she had to pay quite a bit of money for their very short marriage to get rid of him. No way, yeah. But this guy. His father is a billionaire. Oh, great. And he does equestrian stuff, which is oh, also... And he, like, breeds Olympian-level right, right. horses and very stuff. Expensive. He's very, very wealthy himself. So there's no need for that. And that's why... And they'd known each other for years. And they were oh. friends. And then ultimately something... didn't happened. work out. Well, and what's weird, what people are saying is, like, three months ago, they were celebrating their three-year anniversary. And they were he just like, I love cheated. you. Blah, blah, blah. Well, she's doing a movie... Currently, just wrapped filming, not even a month ago, with fucking uh, Davidson. What's that guy? The 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Pete. Pete Davidson. Because they've been being photographed lately, and they're like, are they friends? I'm like, you know what? Pete Davidson isn't friends with any woman. Thank you. He bangs them all. He fucks everything. And he is If he can't, he does. And he he just, I I know he's got big dick energy, like you said. Well, this is a thing. But there's got to be more to it than that. Pete Davidson, okay, so timing-wise, he was dating the star of Bridgerton, that cute little girl. Yes, he was, for a minute. For a couple of months, and then conveniently in August, they broke up. And why he was filming this film with yes, Kelly. And now Kaylee is now Kaylee, my bad. Kaylee is now also single. And so they've been and now they're being photographed everywhere. Well, and apparently they are, have been a great source of comfort for each other during this time. <laughs> He's really good at that, isn't he? Oh my god. And so I'm reading this going He's literally everybody's rebound. I'm reading this going, what is it about Pete Davidson? If I met him, I would be like, you know what it is? It's the same thing that all girls say when they're talking to their girl and they say, oh my God, he's so hot, blah, blah, blah. And they he's go, so funny. I go, is he hot or is he just tall? Because <laughs> tall guys are hot inherently, you know? True. There's something about a really tall guy with wide shoulders. Well, and you go, is he hot or is he just tall, girl? I guess it depends on what your type is. But I know for me, because me and you are both ultra, ultra feminine. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, we're strong, but we're very feminine. Yes. And there's something about with a, a mouse. The, the, yeah, oh, God. <laughs> and so masculinity in general is extremely um, it's very sensual. It's very intoxicating. Yes. And yes. so when you're big and you're bulky and you're like literally overpowering a you you're know, like over you're like I am all fucking about it. You're like let me crawl all over you. Get over here, you tree. I will say this one line that Sarah Jessica Parker said in one of the many Sex and the City episodes is when she's like, I need to feel the weight of, of a, a man. man on top of me. I relate with that. I'm like, I need absolutely. to get laid. Right? Yes, I have definitely been there. Totally. It's so true. It's very primal. And so... Um, <laughs> I know, people don't think of women as primal. And she's only 5'6", so she's not super tall. And so... Yeah. And Pete Day, I don't know how to tall. that's tall, but... Well, it, it's tall for me, for Because sure. we're tiny, yeah. So I'm like, you know what, Kaylee? You do you, girl. Is I, he tall? Is he like a tall dude? He's very tall. Oh, okay. Like, if you see the photos of them, she's 5'6", and she's like at his nip. Oh, so he's like towering he's over her. He's probably 6'5". I wonder where what his story is. And like, he's where did not, he come from? Well, he's from Long Island. So, I mean, but how did he get discovered? How did he become famous? I'm not quite sure, but his father died at 9-11. Oh, God. Yes. He was a firefighter, and he died in 9-11. And after that happened, he kind of had a breakdown. And he's struggled with his mental health ever since. Yeah. He's also struggled with um, substance abuse. abuse. He has done a few stints in rehab. Yeah. And I think he's just trying to get his shit together constantly. But what's interesting, because I could not understand why people found him so funny. The the people that find him funny are the industrial people. Like, if you talk to any comedian or writer, they go, he is unfucking believably brilliant. Yeah. He's a genius, and I'm like, really? Why? Why am I the layman who just watches comedy? I don't, I don't see it. But they swear by him, and they he was kind of discovered when he was going through the grieving process of his father. I think oh. he was doing some stand up, and they were just uh-huh. like, this guy's unbelievable, and that's kind of why he is so beloved in the industry. I'm hoping well, one day I can, <clears throat> I can see it. Yeah, <laughs> but I I just don't. But he has fucked some of the hottest women hottest in the world. Women in the world. I mean, Ariana Grande. I mean, name them. Um, so speaking of, let's do some ugly and awkward moments of the week, right? I don't know why it bothers me so much, but it really does. Okay. So I went and got my nails done the other day, and. I had to use Jerry's bank card to do it. We okay. have we still we have multiple accounts. Yeah. And so the one that I was gonna use was his. And he is okay, I know I don't always I don't say a lot of kind things about my husband, but it he is annoying. Yeah. And so I mean <laughs> one of the things he has that has happened to him multiple times is that he has had his bank accounts hacked. Oh. I think because of stupid shit that he does. And I'm not talking about cheating or online no, no, bullshit. No, no, no. Just not Just being protected. looking at dumb yeah. emails that he shouldn't sure. open. You know, yes. random things yes. that I'm like, you're so, okay. You know what? I this can't. This is why our senior citizens are victims. Thank you. Always. And I'm like, how can you fall for this shit? Uh-huh. You know, I just, it's, it angers me. But I have come to peace with it and I have let him fight those battles to where yeah. he's like learned a lesson and he's like, sure. okay, note to self, don't do that again. You know, don't order off eBay and whatever. <laughs> or whatever, yeah. Um. 
Um, so, <laughs> so now he's ultra protective of his account and he has locks on all of his ATM cards. Okay. To where he has to physically go in and put a password in. And to use it. To use it. Okay. It's annoying as fuck. Did he tell you the password? No, but I don't care. He would. Oh, okay. No, but, no, I meant for this awkward moment. Well, here's it's a, it's a it's a multitude of of clusterfuck actually. So, <laughs> what happened was is I leave. He's in charge of getting Jeff that day, and because my appointment was coinciding with school getting out, I tell him I'm going. He's annoyed. I'm like, sorry, too bad. You know, he's like, so I go. I get my nails done. I go to pay, and the card won't work. <gasps> by by the way, before. She's doing my nails. I look at the clock and I'm like, you know what? It's 2.15. Jeff gets out of school in 15 minutes. I call him to make sure, like, are you on your way? Yeah. Because he was in the garage working on something and I didn't want him to lose track of time. Lose track of time. Ring, 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 ring. Goes to voicemail three times. Then I'm fucking annoyed because I'm like, okay, you know what? You better be on your damn way. That's all I have to say. So I let it go. Finish what I'm doing. Go to pay. Card won't work. (gasps) Go to call him and I see that I have a missed call. Okay. From him. Okay. From the time that I first called till now. And I'm like, great. And a text that says, why aren't you answering your phone? Oh, my My God. truck's broken down. <gasps> and I can't go get Jeff. Oh, no. And then I'm like, oh, shit. So now I'm standing at the cashier trying to pay my nail lady. The bank card won't go through. I'm like, I hate my life. He's telling me he's broke down. I'm thinking, okay, now, and, and it's 20 minutes after my son's out of school. Great. And I'm like, fantastic. I can't pay this woman to get out of here. She's going to take my nails. <laughs> <laughs> I, thankfully, she's like, don't even worry about it. Just come back. Luckily, you know. You're a good well, client. fortunately, I had some money. I had cash. So you're and just I'm like, like here. But I was a dollar short. Oh, for God's sake! So I was a dollar short, and I couldn't tip her because it, she didn't care. You're she's like, like, I will be back. Yeah. She's like, I don't care. She's yeah. like, we'll just let's call it a day. You're paid. You know, take. You know, I don't need a tip, and yeah. I don't care that you're a dollar short. But I was humiliated, yes. mortified. Aww. So I. Is that the awkward moment? That was the awkward moment. Oh I go home, and he's home. And working you look on like the car. A- my son's on his computer playing. Everything's fine. And you're like, <gasps> oh no. Because then I'm mad. Because like, then I'm like, okay. Family meeting! There is no crisis. <laughs> I was more, I was thinking that Jeff's at school, crying, waiting in the office. You know, everything's kosher dilly. And I'm freaking at the thing embarrassed bright red all these people in there i'm like oh my god and you're like hurriedly looking like a fool so then he's like i pull up like i literally pulled into the driveway like that and he looks over and then all of a sudden his face is like oh shit you know like (laughs) i'm not the one mad now oh she's mad he's like what's wrong i'm like i just went off he's like well i turned it on i i think i did i'm like you know you didn't you know you didn't Oh, God. And this is an argument we've had so many times because I'm like, how many times do I have to go to the grocery store to use your stupid card and get declined and have to fucking call you at home and be like, unlock the goddamn card. I asked you before I left, did you unlock the card? Yes, I did. I did. Okay, because I don't want to be embarrassed again. This is like the 10th time. No, I swear. I unlocked so it. So not only are you embarrassed. Denied. You're I'm embarrassed like, and angry. Both. Oh. And there's nothing worse than them going, I'm sorry, but your card, do you have another card? Well, it's just, the little thing was like, denied. I'm like, <gasps> And you know what? It, they always think you don't have the money. Of course. They never believe you when you tell when you try to give them the story. I'm like, you know what? My husband is, oh my God, I'm telling you, sitting here telling you the story. She's like, it's fine, it's fine. Yes. Okay, well, here's my awkward moment. And I wish I could just, I want to just like, I want to go back in time. <laughs> so we're at this amazing tasting that I told you about earlier. Right. Oh no. Now, it's been very. It's like the time I fell in the restaurant when I was mad. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It was the most horrible. <laughs> I do remember that though. No. I'm angry and demanding things from the manager, and then I fall. <laughs> like, how's your trip, Karen? <laughs> so, we're sitting Fuck. at this. We're sitting at this tasting. We're all having a great time. Jeremy and Daryl are, you know, using their Dix's lightsabers, <laughs> and we're getting towards the end. That would irritate me so bad. The AC went on. Well, after a while, I just didn't care anymore because I'm like, I can't control these two fools. I would just be like, give me another glass of champagne. It wasn't. And the thing is, they weren't aggressive. It was no, just. No, no. I you know. know. It was very tasteful. It was just banter. annoying. And so for me, it was annoying. And so. Well, it's not annoying that the guy's doing it. It would be annoying that my husband was doing it. I'm like, why are you doing it? Like, really? Well, especially <laughs> when I'm looking at like, who are you? <laughs> like, what is this? You You've know? never seen this behavior before? Well, I have, but not like that. I don't know. It was weird. Anyway. <laughs> He's having a day. In fact, I know he was ignoring me because I know he heard me when um, he had left. He said, well, I'm going to let you enjoy these wines and I'll be back in a little bit. Just enjoy the wines. I'll be back in like five minutes. We're like, okay, awesome. Thank you. So he left and we were drinking wines and he was looking up the goat cheese thing. Who? Daryl. 
Because he wanted to confirm that I was correct that it was goat cheese. Oh my God. And so I said, he's looking it up and I go, did you notice how brown Jeremy's eyes are? Like they're so brown you can't even see the blacks in his eyes. They're like super dark. And he acted like I wasn't speaking. Oh. Like he didn't acknowledge and he never does that. Well, I, yeah. he didn't acknowledge. Well, this is the same guy he's been having a pissing match with. Exactly. And he's like, oh, now you're going to say something about his eyes. <laughs> I already hate Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. Now I hate him even more. He didn't hate Jeremy. It's possible that he sensed chemistry. I don't know. He, you know what? He knows you as well as you know him. Here's the thing about really good hosts. Or Trader Joe's cashiers. <laughs> they are trained to be that way. Absolutely. They know what they're doing. It's part of the job. It's the it's the job. And when they're really fucking good at it, you yeah. have no idea they're doing it. Well, they're charming. Yes. And all of that. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> it was amazing. And Daryl was not embarrassing by oh, any means. I know. I know. That Darryl's, was, that was my job. could never be. No, I'm saying it could be the most subtle thing. It was subtle. Thing, yeah, but was subtle. because you're the wife and you know him so well. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I get it. So nobody else would have noticed that he was no semi being a, an idiot. Just me. <laughs> but sorry, Daryl, you're not an idiot. But I you am know not. What I, mean. I am not subtle when I'm being an idiot. <laughs> so it was a beautiful room, very industrially but farmhousey. Air conditioning was on because you know the more you drink, it, you get warm and oh, yeah. stuff like that. So I'm sitting and there. I'm not even drinking right now. I'm freaking. And I'm gonna turning on the. We're almost done. And we'll cool yeah. Off. No, I know. So I'm sitting there, and apparently I was acting like I was cold. I didn't feel like I was doing that, but I guess I was kind of going like this and rubbing yeah. my arms, and I was just kind of listening, or whatever. So he stops mid sentence and he goes, "Are you cold?" He goes, "I can turn off the. I can turn down the air conditioning because I was like blowing right on me, right on you." And what did I do? I look down at my boobs and I go, um, and I touch my Jamie. Boobs. <laughs> I go, no, I'm good. Oh my God, why? And Daryl goes, what are you doing? <laughs> Hello, I'm Jamie. Have we met? <laughs> what my name is-, is Jamie Awkward Minor. And here's what made it worse. <laughs> oh no, is- how could it get any worse? Jeremy didn't realize I was being awkward. He's like, oh, okay, you're fine, right? And then I go, I'm really sorry. That was so inappropriate. And then he gets embarrassed. He's like, because you had to say something, damn it. And I look down. I'm like, I can't believe myself. And I'm like, shut up now. I'm like, so many, Jesus, excuse me. I have to go to the ladies' room. Oh, my God. It was awful. It was awful. I was like, oh my God. Why do we always, we have this in common, all of so us. So then I just ate some cheese and I well, just We have to it. announce it. Like, we have to announce that we're awkward after it's awkward. Stephanie, I wanted to die. I <laughs> wanted to die. I'm like, and you know, my boobs aren't small. It's not like it's, it's not Jamie, like the, Yeah, you're all boobs. God. Like, literally, you have your gorgeous face and hair and boobs. Hello, breasts. How are yeah, you today? Yes. Jesus Every Christ. man you've ever met notices the second they, oh, hi. Wow. Hi, boob. <laughs> I wanted to die. Oh my God, that is so funny. So we were in the car, we're on our way back, and I go, can you believe I did that? He goes, actually, I can believe that you did that. He's like, and I wish you had stopped, but you didn't. You just kept going. It's like, okay, well, this is my wife. He's Hello. like, I can't save you. I'm sorry. There's You're on like your own. I can do. Here you are. This it's is too her. late. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, it was really Love embarrassing. Love that. Yeah, mm. So there you go. Awkward moment for God. the God. Well, the, thank God stars. you had some champagne in your body. Otherwise, you might have actually died of humiliation. Oh, my God. It was so bad. And I'm just like, oh, this is great. This is so great. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, that's the show this week. Yeah. I hope you guys have had a good weekend. Enjoy your week. And we will see you next week with a new show. Bye. Bye.